Hello and welcome to Cashmatics. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to differentiate sine x and cos x from first principles using some useful approximations which you can get from the McLaren series. I'll then be showing you how we can use these results along with some differentiation techniques such as the quotient rule to differentiate some other trig functions including inverse trig functions. Now this is going to be a bit intense so please make sure you give it all of your attention and if at any point you feel I'm going a bit too quick, pause the video or even rewind it if you, do, if you need to hear something again. So grab yourself some paper and a pen and let's ride this roller coaster. Now the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to differentiate sine x and cos x from first principles. But before I do that, I need to go over one or two things. So over here in orange, what we've got is the standard way of differentiating something from first principles. Okay, so dy by dx is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h take away f of x all over h. Okay, and hopefully you've seen that in year one. Now what might be new to you is what I've got here in blue. Okay, now if there's an angle in radians, so I've just called it h here, if h is in radians, then as h approaches 0, so as it gets smaller and smaller, then sine h will be approximately h. So when it's very close to 0, sine h will be approximately h. So that means sine h over h is going to approach 1, okay, because sine h will approach h, so h over h will approach 1. Now, this, something similar happens for cos h, okay but you get a slightly different approximation so cos h is approximately 1 minus h squared over 2 and cos h minus 1 over h I can rewrite like this so this bit here 1 minus h squared over 2 that's my cos h minus 1 all over h so the ones will cancel each other out leaving me with minus h squared over 2 now because h is 0 h squared will always be will also be 0 so 0 over 2 will be zero okay so that'll approach zero so over here in, in the yellow cloud I've got those two little rules uh, just summarized for us to use in our proof later okay the other thing we need to know is this identity over here so the sine of a plus and minus b is equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b and hopefully that's familiar to you but please you know get used to using it so you know how to use it comfortably when it comes to any kind of trig identity question. Right, okay, so let's get started. So let's say we've got f of x is equal to sine x. And what I'm going to do first of all is write what f of x plus h is. Okay, so if you look over here, I've got f of, f of x and I need f of x plus h. So that would be the sine of x plus h. And I'm going to use the identity above to write down what that is. So f of x plus h would equal sine x cos h plus cos x sine h. Okay, so that's my starting point. So let's put everything together. So imagine we've got y is equal to f of x. So dy by dx would equal the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which is all of this. So sine x cos h plus cos x sine h take away f of x which is sine x all over h all right and what we do next is i'm just going to write that slightly differently okay so i'm going to put together this term and this term okay because they both got sine x and i'm going to factorize out the sine x and i'm going to write the other term separately okay so i've got sine x cos h minus 1 plus cos x sine h all divided by h. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to split the fraction. So I've got two terms on the top. They're both divided by h, so I can write them both over h separately. So the first one, I'm going to write sine x multiplied by cos h minus 1 over h plus cos x sine h over h. Now hopefully now you can see why I've got these two terms or these two expressions here in the yellow cloud. Okay, because I've got those over here now so I can apply those approximations. 
So this one here, we know that becomes zero. And if that's zero, then zero times this term multiplied by this term will also be zero. Okay, so this whole term, this whole first term disappears. And this one here becomes one, which means the only thing I'm left with is cos x. So all of this, as h approaches zero, becomes cos x. So what we can say from that is the derivative of sine x is equal to cos x. Okay, and that's what we were aiming for. Right, now I know that's a lot to take in. So like I said, if you need to pause, uh, if you needed to pause at any point, I hope you did pause. If you need to rewind it and watch all that again, please watch it all again before we go on to the next one, because the next one you're going to do for yourself. Okay, we're going to differentiate cos x from first principles. And I'm going to give you a few pointers, but you're going to do it for yourselves. Right, so here it is. I want you to differentiate cos x using, a, using the same method. Now, I'm just going to write down the answer here. Okay, so d by dx of cos x is equal to minus sine x. Okay, so that's what you're aiming for. But what I want you to do is get there from first principles. So use the information there on the top. Pause the video and I'll reveal the working shortly. But please give it a good go. Right, so I'm about to reveal the answer. And here it goes. Right, so hopefully you got there somehow, right? Um, it, it does take a bit of practice, and uh, it is a bit fiddly, but if you practice it enough, you'll be able to do it without having to think about it too much. Right, let's move on to y equals tan x. Okay, now on the top there, I've got a few things which are going to be useful to us. Okay, so y equals tan x is just what we're going to differentiate. The next two things... The derivative of sine x is cos x, which we just learnt. Okay, the derivative of cos x is minus sine x, which you just did. And on the right there, I've got the quotient rule. Okay, so d by dx of uv equals v du, take away u dv over v squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to differentiate y equals tan x using the quotient rule. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite y equals tan x as y equals sine x over cos x. Okay, and hopefully you know that identity. Um, it's, you know, it's a pretty straightforward basic one. Right, so now we're going to use the quotient rule now. So the top is u, so u is equal to sine x, and v is equal to cos x, so that's the denominator. And I need to know what du is, and that would be cos x. Okay, using that. Okay, and dv is equal to minus sine x, and I've just used that, okay? So all I'm gonna do now is put it all together. So it's gonna be v du, so cos x, cos x, take away u dv, which is gonna be sine x multiplied by minus sine x, all over v squared, which is cos squared x. Right, so, this top becomes cos squared x plus sine squared x, all divided by cos squared x. Okay, and hopefully you know that sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to 1. Okay, so that identity there, which is another basic identity, gives me the top as just 1. So it's just 1 over cos squared x. Okay, and that is equal to sec squared x. So therefore, d by dx of tan x is equal to sec squared x. Okay, so that's that. That's that derivative done. Okay, so I'm going to give you something very similar to try. All right, uh, pause the video if you need to before we move on, but I'm going to give you cot x to try. Right. So there it is, this is y equals cot x. And I'll tell you what we're aiming for, okay? We are aiming to try and get d by dx of cot x equals minus cos x squared x. Okay, so that's what you're aiming for. But you need to do it in the way I've just shown you. So pause the video, give it a go, and I'll put up the answer in a bit. Right, so I'm about to reveal the answer. And here it is.
Okay, so hopefully you were able to do that. You know, it wasn't too different to the uh, the one for Tanex. You just had to be careful with your minuses and pluses. Um, but yeah, let's move on. Right, so the next one I'm going to do is y equals sec x. Right now, before I begin, I need to rewrite it. Okay, I need to write it as y equals one over cos x. Okay, so I've written it as a quotient. So what I say is u is equal to 1 and v is equal to cos x. So therefore du would equal 0 and dv would equal minus sine x. Right, so let's put all of that together into our quotient rule. So dy by dx is equal to v du, so cos x 0, multiplied by 0, sorry, Take away u dv, which is 1 multiplied by minus sine x, all divided by v squared, which would be cos squared x. Right, so that first term disappears, that's 0. This one becomes a positive sine x, all over cos squared x. Now, the way I'm going to write this is I'm going to split this fraction up a little bit. I'm going to write that as 1 over cos x multiplied by sine x over cos x. Right, so that's how you multiply fractions to get this one over here. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. But this is normally written as, so that's sec x, and sine x over cos x is tan x, and it's normally written as sec x tan x. So therefore, d by dx of sec x, oops, let's write that again, sec x is equal to sec x tan x right so pause the video make some notes because I'm going to give you something very similar to try in a bit okay so here's yours to try and you're going to get a very similar result to what we had before once you do it so you're going to get d by dx of cosec x is equal to minus cosec x cotex. So that's what, we, that's what you're aiming for. Pause the video, give it a go, and as always, I'll put up the answer in a bit. Right, so I'm about to reveal the answer, and here it is. Okay, so how did you get on? Did you manage to get there, or did you get lost along the way? If you did, just read through the working, and uh, just try and iron out any misconceptions or errors that you made. Right, and finally, the inverse trig functions. Okay, so here we've got y equals the inverse sine of x. Now, this is the way I tend to write it, the inverse sine of x. Okay, but some people write it like this. So in some books, you'll, be, you'll see it written as arc sine x. Okay, it means exactly the same thing, but just remember, sometimes it's written like that. I'm choosing to write it this way because that's what I'm used to. Okay, so this is dealt with slightly different. You need to understand things a little bit more, okay? And you need to practice these because otherwise you'll get lost and you might do something which looks intuitive to begin with but it can end up taking down a dead end, okay? So please pay attention. So if y equals sine x, so if y equals the inverse sine of x, that means x equals sine y, okay? Now what I do here is I differentiate with respect to y, so I'm working out what dx by dy is. Okay, and if I differentiate sine, I get cos. So this will be cos y. So let's just flip this over because I actually want dy by dx. So dy by dx will equal 1 over cos y. Now, what a lot of people do at this stage is they, they write this as sec y. Okay, and from there, there's not really much you can do. You can, you can manipulate it, but you're going to end up, you know, you know, going down a dead end. So what we do instead is we use this identity sine squared a plus cos squared a equals 1 and I rearrange that to make cos a the subject okay and that would be equal to the square root of well it'd be plus and minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared a okay and using that what I can do is I can write dy by dx as 1 over plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared y but if you look over here, sine y is actually equal to x. Okay, so sine squared y will equal 
x squared. Okay, and I'm going to plug that into here. All right, so let's just rewrite that. So dy by dx, oops, not like that. dy by dx will equal 1 over plus and minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, so we're almost there, but we need to think about this plus and minus. Now, if I was to draw my inverse sine curve, okay, my inverse sine curve actually looks like that. Okay, and from that we can see the gradient is always positive. Okay, the gradient will never be negative. In which case, I can say dy by dx will always be the positive version of this. Okay, and that's it, we're done. So that gives us our result because dy by dx is this 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, and y is the inverse sine of x. So what we know is d by dx of the inverse sine of x would equal 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, and that is our result. Okay, so I might have gone through that a little bit quick. So, um, you know, go back and watch it again by all means. Make some notes and then you're going to do the inverse cos of x and the inverse tan of x using the same method. All right, so here's the inverse cos of x. Pause the video, give it a go and see how you get on. Right, so I'm just about to reveal the answers. So if you haven't paused the video, please pause it because here it comes. Okay, so again, if I look at the graph of the inverse cosine of x, I can see the gradient is always negative. So that's what I need at this point because I can decide whether the whole thing's going to be positive or negative. And let's move on to the inverse tan. Again, pause the video and see how you get on. And I'm just about to reveal the answer. And there it is. Okay, there's the inverse tan derivative. That's 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, I don't have to bother with the graph of that one because I haven't got the plus and minus root. Okay, and if you look at it, this expression is always going to be positive because 1's positive, that's positive, and x squared will always be positive. So I don't have to worry about it in this case. Right, so I hope that's helped you to understand, first of all, how to do uh, sine and cosine from first principles, and then how to use those results to differentiate the other trig functions, including the reciprocal ones, and then how to differentiate the inverse trig functions. You know, these are important to practice because you might be asked to do any one of those in the exam. So if you can do those, they're actually really easy marks on the paper, provided you've actually practiced them and remembered how to do them. Now, in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use all of these results to differentiate functions involving these ones here. So you might have something like sex squared 4y instead, or you might have something like the inverse tan of uh, 6x. Okay, so I'll show you how to differentiate those. And it's not a massive leap from what we've just done. Okay, uh, it's actually quite straightforward. But this here is what you really needed to know and how to practice. Right, so that's it for now, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.